Vet Uh-oh. Monkey on the stream. How you doing, good sir? Evening, Pac. Even Blake, how are you guys going? Doing yeah, good, good, brother. There, What's up? So let me go ahead and first uh, thank you for all this because this is actually needed. I definitely need it, especially after my uh, 14 years in, in the Navy as a master arms or military police. Uh-huh. I've seen some stuff and then I experienced it myself. And uh, just to give you quick things of some of the things that happened in the past with people before me. Uh, there was a guy, he had, his wife was actually sucking off the whole chain of command, majority of chain of command at a club that was blacklisted in Japan Ooh. while Ooh, he wow. was actually on post. Wow. Damn. This the- was 2002 during the dirty years before Japan got that lockdown and everything that was going on. But So uh, she was I'm, doing the dirty with this guy's whole chain of command? Like between chain command and also people who was at the club, I wasn't there, but the whole thing was videos were floating around. And she was basically doing a circle jerk, and there was a couple others doing this in the club, in a Japanese club, off base. Uh huh. So, wow. and the thing is, uh, when she got, when basically divorce went through, uh, she got the, she actually got the kid, and he tried to fight for the kid, but the command, of course, like the military, doesn't give two shits about the sailor or the or the uh, person member. Yep. And uh, I just found out when it came my turn, go figure, my turn. Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> I saw my my number coming up when I saw things start changing. Uh, my ex-wife pretty much when I went behind her to actually give her a hug and try to ask what's going on. And she hit me. My gut told me if she touched me again, I'll call rape. Ooh. Then, uh, yeah, I just saw things start happening. So I had to do my administrative violence in a different way. Uh, she said some shit to me. So <clears throat> I washed all her clothes and then folded them. I know. I, correct me. I washed all her clothes, then dried them, then put them on the bed. What makes this interesting because she's Japanese. Uh-huh. And the thing is, if you understand about Japanese, they got everything in their little area. So when she came home and saw all their clothes fold, uh, pretty much on the bed, she, it took her six and a half hours to clean all that stuff. I took her time. And the thing is, she called my command saying, I did this, I did that. And then when they called, what did you do to your wife? I was like, I just washed the clothes. Uh-huh. And they were laughing like, holy shit, I should have thought of that. But um, <laughs> when my divorce happened, everything went down. My, my uh, next chain command next screwed me over royally. Uh, I was going through it real bad. And then um, pretty much fast forwarding up all the way up to now, my daughter just recently told me as of two weeks ago, she doesn't want to talk to me anymore, just out of the blue. I just sent like a $200 package of all this stuff, the things that she needed for school, not to mention you know, desserts and things like that. Uh-huh. Try to keep things going no matter what that, you know, uh, dude, I'm still there. I, no I am what. so sorry for this, bro. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough one, man. I get well, I mean, if if it was anybody else, I'm sure there would have been a bullet and anything else. But me, you know, for everything else that's happened, let's let's put it to this way. At the same time my divorce happened, I was told in 2012 that I had a corneal disease, uh, pretty much called character conus, which pretty much meant I was going blind. Yeah, yeah. And then I was told on top of that that um I was being I was being forced converted from being a master arms to an ABH. So basically I was going into aviation community and with no uh school no nothing and pretty much i was there for the last two and a half years on the ship cleaning up after people in the birthing uh-huh. so 12 year vet gold chevron has never gotten in trouble i uh was at previous command for security and before that i was at a, uh that picture right there is actually uh my anti-piracy operations okay so i was doing it for mobile security and i went from that to nothing now i'm a diesel tech and i'm actually getting ready to go to the military see the command go meet you know make my money so i'm doing fine all right good good, good. Living Dude, well, man. That 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 is. Listen, whenever they they turn the children, it happened to me too. Like my, my daughters, they, they, I lost them. At, you know, pretty much when I got divorced, and it, it's a horrible thing. And and they just don't seem to understand how how much pain this really is to men. When when because we love our kids, when they take them away like it's nothing, and and I I literally can't understand. Why there isn't a barricaded gunman across the street from every single divorce court in America? I mean, it's there's so much injustice. I I just can't wrap my head around it. Well, for me, that would be a very long bullet because my kids are located in Japan. Uh huh. I got you. Listen, <laughs> I've heard all kinds of nightmares about the way that Japan ha- has their stuff. Oh yeah. Now, in regards well, to your chain of command, okay, I've had to do this probably a dozen times. Uh, where I found a guy was getting divorced, and the chain of command is like literally leaning on this guy. He's like, oh, you better give her the money. She's got to take care of her house, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, who who wants to lose their career over this? Because this is called undue command influence. 
Uh, if you look at the regulations, she's entitled to the BAH. That's it, unless there's another award somewhere. If there's no award yet, that's it. You can make them move into the barracks to, you know, to keep them out of trouble. I'm all behind that. But you're dogpiling a guy who's going through one of the most traumatic things that could happen in his life, short of his parents dying, and you're being a raging asshole. And, and they were very pissed when I did this. And w at one time, I wrote up the DA-1559. I put my commander in there, the first sergeant in there, and explained exactly what they're doing. I walked it up to the sergeant major, put it on his desk, and I said, Sergeant Major, if this situation isn't handled, that's going to the DODIG, and it is going to be bad for everyone. The sergeant major read it, checked the regs, Went down to the went over to the battalion commander, the battalion <coughs> commander, and the sergeant major went to visit the company commander, who, by the way, the next day was very unhappy with me. I don't care. I am for the dudes. I always have been, and I always will be. Well, I'll tell you this, and this is uh, for me. My situation when my like when I told you my ex told me that she was going to call rape just for me hugging her, which apparently. And if you've been through any training, especially as a military police officer, especially when that don't ask, don't tell, what the way 40 hours, 40 hours of my life going through for shit I didn't want to be involved with. But uh -huh. um, for being told that, I went to my chain of command, asked them, can I move into the barracks? They told me, oh, we'll get you through this. I was like, wait a minute, that's not what I want to hear. I'm asking, can I move into the barracks? Well, uh, you haven't had a violent situation. No, I'm trying to avoid one. The uh -huh. last guy that had this situation happen to him, he had his gun taken. And let me tell you, it's kind of like any other job. If you have a primary job that involves certain tools, a master of arms having his gun taken away, his dog taken away, not being able to be in charge of his, uh, his section, something he worked hard for. It's like being and a dude without a dick. A yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Well, no, I, I hated uh, police work, but I loved, the, long, I loved the, um, the force protection and everything else. I was harbor security. I was I was happy doing mobile security, but uh, for when it came back to base security, it was a drag on me. Like, but I mean, I held it together. All it was right. a job at the end of the day, but I somewhat enjoyed it. All right. Well, hey, but, thank, uh, you, thank you for calling in. Uh, we appreciate it. All right. Hey, man. Thank you for your oh, story. No, no, oh, no problem. I hope more get to go ahead and share this because this is important. We all need to get this out. All right, brother. Turn two. You take it easy, man. Take it easy, brother. All right. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonkulous.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Gazer box.